Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're having a good day today. Uh, obviously, as you can see behind me, we got the 2021 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quattrofolio. And basically today, I'm gonna be showing you all of its cool features and options. I'm gonna drive it, and then I'm gonna give my final opinion on this car. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so just going through the general overview of this car, this is a 2021 model. The only difference between the 2021 and the 2020s is basically just the paint color options that you have. Now, with that being said, the base price of this car is $75,000. And when you factor in options, you're looking at about a mid 80s to low 90s range car. It comes with a 2.9 liter V6 right in the front right here. And it's supposed to be uh, developed by Ferrari engineers. So you can basically say this is a Ferrari engine, although some people may disagree. It comes with 505 horsepower and it has a top speed of about 190 miles an hour, I believe, and it goes zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds, but I will make another video on this. This car can actually do it faster if the wheels hook up. And speaking of wheels, this car is a rear wheel drive car and it also seats five people. So starting on the front end right here, I'm just gonna point out a couple of features that stick out to me. The first things are these two air vents right here that obviously go in to cool the engine. I think they look really, really cool. They actually have a little bit of Ferrari DNA to them. When you look at like the 812 super fast, for example, I know they're not the exact same thing, but it just makes me think of similar design language with you know Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. And next thing that stands out to me is all this carbon fiber that is down in the middle that just gives the Quadrifoglio all this extra aggression that the normal Giulia doesn't necessarily have. So yeah, this whole entire front splitter is carbon fiber, which you wanna make sure you don't scrape it if you're going to a parking spot because the car does sit pretty low. But, you know, and you just look at all the air vents and all the, you know, aerodynamics that are added to the car. It just makes the car look so much different and so much more road presence than the regular Julia. And I think it does justify the increase in price. So moving on to the side profile of the car, it is typical Julia with a little bit of difference. So the first thing that you're going to notice, and this is a symbol that only the Quattrofolio models have on the Stelvio and the Julia is this four leaf clover right here. It's also on the other side. This basically just signifies that you have the top end model of the Quattrofolio. And looking at the wheels right here, so these are P0 Corsas, uh, Pirelli P0 Corsas, and they're actually both 19 inch wheels uh, front and back. And then when you look at the actual wheel, obviously you can change the rims and all that stuff. These are the steel brakes on this car. I believe you can also get carbon ceramics on them. The brakes in these cars do go out pretty quickly if you get the steel uh, steel uh, brake pads and rotors. Um, this car went on the track a couple times and the brakes were basically completely shot out after only two days of track use. So this probably isn't the best track car if you're thinking about taking this to the track. It's just too heavy and it just wears down the brakes and the tires as well. You also got the carbon fiber mirrors, which I think look really, really good. And then you also got this carbon fiber door sill on the bottom that just makes the car stand out and look different compared to all the other Julia's on the road. And then this is one of my favorite options right here. This is a whole carbon fiber roof. So it goes all the way back here and it stops just before the window. I think it just makes the car look really, really cool. And, you know, it just is kind of separating itself from all the other Julia's on the market. Um, you know, kind of the whole body line obviously is still Julia. Door handles are the same, windows, same, all that stuff. But, you know, besides that, I think it does look really, really good. Now, moving into the back end, this is probably my favorite view of the Julia Quattrofolio. And the reason why is because the diffuser and the exhaust pipes, and then also, this little spoiler right here. So I'll start with the spoiler. This is also a carbon fiber spoiler. Like I said, there's carbon fiber all over the car. I think it just makes the car look so much better with it on. And it's not necessarily the biggest thing ever, but when you see it in the flesh, it does look really, really good. Right here, you got the Julia badge, Alfa Romeo badge, license plate, not too much going on here. The lights actually do look pretty good. I think they look better than the Maserati lights because they're just a little bit more thin, a little bit more modern looking. And then down here is really where you see the biggest difference between the regular Julia's and the Julia Quattrofolio, and that is with the exhaust and the whole diffuser, you know, air intake thing. So you can see you got the quad exhaust on both sides. I'll show you the exhaust in a minute. 
but it just looks so good. And then you go into this diffuser, this massive diffuser down here. I mean, it just really makes the car have this special road presence that you probably wouldn't get in a regular Julia. Also, you got these little air vents right here that go through and they are functional. They're not just there for decoration or whatever. And my first thought when I get into the interior, in person, it looks a lot better than what you see in photos and videos. On videos and cameras and all that stuff, it doesn't really capture the actual quality of the materials. It just kind of captures the basic design language, which, which isn't necessarily bad. But when you see it in person and you see all the little details of the car, it really does look nice in here. You know, you got the carbon fiber all over. You got it on the steering wheel as well the center console, you got it over here by the airbag on the other side as well. And I'm just gonna turn this car on real quick. All right, so just starting with the steering wheel right here, the first thing that stands out to me is just how good quality and sporty it feels. You have the Alcantara right here, which is right where your hands rest. So if your hands do get sweaty or sticky or whatever, they're not gonna slide all over the leather. And you know, I think that is a really good feature that Alfa Romeo put on the steering wheel. And just the overall design language, I mean, it just looks clean, it looks modern, it has all of your, you know, technology that you need. You can change your volume and answer calls and, uh, you know, change music and do all that stuff. You also have the iconic start stop switch right here, which actually is very similar to the ones you see in Ferraris. But just cool to see you also get the quadrifolio uh, four leaf clover badge right here and just overall if you just look at the shape i mean it just looks so sporty especially for a you know five seater sedan it makes you feel like you're in something special now back here you have the car uh not carbon fiber you have i believe these are aluminum paddle shifters right here they just feel really good they are column mounted which you know i generally prefer column mounted paddle shifters over uh, steering wheel mounted and then going into the tack and the infotainment you do see that there actually is still a little bit of analog only left and right over here you got your rpms you got your uh, oil temp on the left and then right here you have your speedometer and then you have your uh, gas tank and then in the middle right here is your infotainment now to control the infotainment in the center right here you actually have to go to your windshield wiper uh, stock and you find this little button on the side right here and you just click it and it goes through the different settings There's really not a whole lot to go through here, but you do have your trip information. You have your miles per gallon um, You know you have your little sensor which if you put it on it'll basically just show you if there's a car ahead If you're gonna you know hit the car how close it is to you all that stuff I don't really care about that in this car, but I know some of the buyers do care about those safety features and then you obviously just have your, you know, speedometer, your miles per hour, and I believe that is all you get. And then just moving to the center console here, before I get into the infotainment and all that stuff, I'm just going to want to talk about just how nice this looks. I mean, look at all the detail. You got the carbon fiber, you got these really nice uh, wheels right here, the stock wheels. You get a little Italian flag outline right there. The gear selector looks really nice and clean. The air conditioning buttons look, you know, modern. They have little LED lights on both sides and you know and just the whole entire look of the car it really does look nicer than what a lot of people say online now getting into the actual infotainment system it's pretty simple and straightforward it's not the most complex infotainment system but it does have uh, apple carplay and it gets the job done so basically if you want to go to your home screen all you got to do is just press this little home button right here and then you get to the home screen now on the home screen you have a couple of things you have your radio you have your 
uh, map navigation that actually does uh, come standard with the car regardless of whether or not you use Apple CarPlay. You just got your driver assistance, climate, performance gauges, which I do actually think are pretty cool because you click on them and you can go through all your different technical gauges and you know torque management and all this stuff. And uh, my favorite feature is actually the drag race feature and the drag race feature right here. So basically, if you have the car in drive, uh, I believe in any drive mode, I usually have it in race mode. If you come to a stop for about two or three seconds, you're gonna see a green light pop up. And basically all you have to do is just launch the car and it will give you a you know, zero to 60 time. It'll give you your eighth mile, your quarter mile. You can even do a braking distance from, I believe it's like 60 to zero is what it is. And I think it's just a really convenient feature just to have built into your car. And then just going through more of the infotainment, you have vehicle information right here, which is another important one. You can basically see your tire pressures right here. You go back a little bit, you can see your oil temperatures and um, you know just what driving mode you're in and it shows you everything that's going on right so if I switch this to race mode right you can see all of the uh, you know all of the different changes which is also another thing I want to talk about is it does that little car on the track but you can see all the little changes that it does right so the exhaust valve is open the gas pedal is open you know you're in drift uh, torque vectoring your steering is in sport your shifting's in race right you have no engine limiter I think it just makes the car a really, really cool and fun car to have. Most sedans, they don't have stuff like this, you know, they just have basic infotainment. This car is still a sports car after all, and it's just nice to see Alfa Romeo put things like this into the infotainment system. Now, in terms of just uh, storage and practicality, you do have two cup holders right here, and you also have some more in the back. You also have a little uh, storage space in front of the cup holders, which I just put my draggy right there. You have a, I believe this is a 12 volt outlet. You got your air conditioning, very simple, straightforward. You do have dual climate air conditioning as well. This is your drive mode selector. So you just kind of switch through it. You just click it once to change drive mode. The one thing I do want to mention is that if you do want to get in the race mode and, you, and you're clicking it and you're like, why is it not going to race mode? You have to hold it down for about a second or two and then it goes in the race mode like that. And then this is obviously just your infotainment um, wheel. You can also do touchscreen or you can use the buttons, which I think is nice. This is your volume button right here, gear selector. And then this is actually a little pouch that you can put your key in, which I think is really, really cool. If it's perfectly right there, you also can put your key in here. And I'm going to move my wallet out of here real quick. This is also another place just to place your phone. I think it's very convenient. If you want to charge your key, you can actually put your Alfa Romeo key right in there. And it fits perfectly, has a little outline. I think that's a cool feature and then you obviously have your USB and your aux cables and all that stuff. Also another thing that I do want to mention on the seats, these do have uh, fully adjustable seats. So basically you can move it forwards and backwards if you want to. You can you know, recline and decline the, um, the seat. You can also, which I think is really, really cool, you can actually um, narrow or widen the little side bolsters right here that are in the sports seats by basically pressing these two buttons. If you press this one, it makes it tighter on you. If you press this one, it makes it open up more. So if you are a wider person and you feel like the seats are hugging you too much, you can actually just uh, easily open up these little side bolsters right there. And then you also have uh, three different uh, seat memory settings. All you have to do to set your memory on these seats is you just hold the button down in whatever position and number you want. And after about two seconds, it will beep and it will be set. All right, so getting into the back seat right here, it's surprisingly big. For such a sporty and relatively small sedan, it actually does have quite a bit of legroom. I really don't have an issue fitting in here. Um, and it just feels really, really nice. You have these nice little air vents right here, uh, which are actually uh, kind of similar to Ferrari vents in a sense. Not the exact same, but I just think they look cool also have a USB cable right here and then you obviously have two cup holders that fold down in the middle seat right here and obviously as you guys saw in the front seats you do have Alcantara right here now the front seats are not the racing seats these are just the regular seats but they do come with Alcantara which just kind of adds that sporty you know fast race car look to it and on the side of the doors you still get more carbon fiber right here lock unlock speakers all that good stuff but yeah I mean in the back right here, it's really not bad. You have a lot of space. The middle seat is a little bit smaller, but I mean, that front seat is in a normal position and I have quite a bit of legroom. So I just kind of wanted to mention that for those of you guys that are wondering about the back seat space. So if you want to open the front of the car and see the engine, basically all you gotta do is just pull this little lever up right here and then the engine 
bay will pop open. And then you just go to the front, find the little lever right here, pull it, lift it up. And underneath we have that beautiful 2.9 liter uh, twin turbo V6. You can see the little 90 degree plaque right there, just showing you, it just looks really, really good. Obviously it is a Ferrari engine technically. Sounds good, it looks good. I kind of wish that they didn't put the whole engine cover on it. I would have rather have just seen the pure engine kind of like Ferrari does with their cars. But nevertheless, the car still does look really, really good. And just all the detail, all the little parts and components you can see inside the car just look really, really cool. All right, and then the last thing I want to show you guys with the front hood is that it's actually carbon fiber. It's made of whole carbon fiber all around the front hood. You obviously can't see it on the outside because it does have the body paint, but underneath you see all of the weight savings going into effect here to make this car handle as good as it does and just be as agile and light as possible. So going into the back trunk right here, you surprisingly get a pretty decent amount of space. This is about one hand length right here. And it goes all the way back there. You can definitely easily get your full grocery shopping in, regular shopping, anything you really want. You could probably fit a person back here, to be honest. It's really not that small. And obviously these buttons right here are how you just fold down the seats in front of you. My one criticism of the trunk right here is that it doesn't have a uh, automatic close and open. Um, you basically have to manually do it. So you close this right here and you have to use the button underneath it to open it. It's not a huge deal, but I feel like for a 2021 car, it should still have some sort of button up here that you can just press and it'll close automatically. But besides that, that's kind of my only uh, down gripe about this car. All right, so just cruising around town, I'm in the normal mode. Everything is super comfortable and smooth and easy to drive. It doesn't even necessarily feel like a sports car right now. It just feels like any other sedan, you know, in terms of just comfortable, um, you know, practical, easy daily driving. And I think that's a, a thing that a lot of people worried about when they buy this car is they're like, well, you know, is it gonna be too stiff, too harsh, too this and that? And the truth is that if you're not in race mode, you're just in the normal mode, it's super easy. You don't even feel like you're in a car. It's not loud. It's not, you know, I mean, obviously the steering is still pretty precise because it is a sports car, but it's not uncomfortable or too stiff or too harsh or any of that. All right, so I'm gonna put this thing in race mode now because we are getting on some uh, roundabouts and some back roads. So I'm just gonna kind of see how this thing handles, how it feels, all of that good stuff. I'm gonna leave it in automatic. I, I will switch to manual later on. I'm just gonna see how this thing feels though. Feels very tight, very planted in the corners. Wow, okay, so this car, surprisingly for being, I believe it's like a 3,800 or 3,900 pound sedan, it does feel very, very sports car-like. It is very planted and the power, this 505 horsepower, it, it throws you back in your seat for sure. This is not a slow car at all. The sound is just so fun, like just getting the RPMs high, downshifting, all that stuff is really, really fun. As race mode turns off the traction, it turns off the stability control. A lot of people think it's, it somehow makes the car handle less good. That is not the truth at all. This car, obviously, if if you don't drive it the right way and you give it too much throttle mid-corner or you just let off the throttle completely, yeah, the car will oversteer, will throw you out. But if you drive it in the correct way, it will handle way better than any of the other driving modes that have all the assistance and nannies on them. This exhaust does sound very, very good. On the upshifts, you get these kind of like pops and I don't even know what it is. It's like, maybe it's like the valve closing and opening. I don't know what it is, but when you upshift, you get this really, really loud pop. Um, it just sounds really, really good. So I know some of you guys are asking, can't do a burnout? Yes, I can, that's how you do it. And that 
that's how you do a burnout in the Alfa Romeo. All right, so that wraps it up for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me feedback on this video. Uh, and just uh, in terms of future videos, I'm gonna be putting out a zero to 60 test verified by Draghi on this Alfa Romeo right here. And I'm also gonna be doing a Lotus Evora GT review. And I'm also gonna be doing some performance stuff with that and probably film some track days with the Lotus as well. So just stay tuned. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.